This is, uh, I was going to say, I was going to say twice in one year, but I think it was the previous summer, summer we had spoken. Yeah. In, uh, in 2020. How are, how are things going? Good? Um, yeah, things are uh, going okay. I mean, it's been a, uh, sorry, I'm just going to adjust my screen. Yeah. A little bit, get that na- ugly cable out of the background. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, things are, it's, it's been a real strange, you know, past couple of years, but oh, sure. um, things have been okay, I guess. We've, uh, um, I've been, I've been up here ever since the pandemic started, so I haven't been able to go anywhere. Uh, travel has been lifted for, for a little while now, um, but uh, my first trip will be actually, uh, actually in, a, in about a week and a half from now, which I'm a little bit nervous about mm. uh, getting on a plane again, so um, but uh, you know, other than that, we've been we've been good. It's nice. It's nice to be home this long. I don't think uh, I can recall the last time I've been at home this long. So yeah, the fa- the family yeah. still likes you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting a little annoying, uh, but uh, you know, I like to you know bug everybody and joke around. <laughs> We're getting a little tired of dad and his, <laughs> his, his uh, shenanigans and his, and his dad jokes and yeah, dad jokes. <laughs> Where are you flying to? Oh, I'm going to Timmins. That's our uh, destination city. And then I'm going to go down into Southern Ontario for uh, maybe four or five days uh, to pick up my wife, who's going to be traveling down there ahead of me with her, okay. uh, her mother. Yeah. Okay. Are you, not, are you playing any shows while you're down here or no? No, no, no. The plan isn't uh, to play any shows. Um, we don't have anything booked. Uh, I think we're starting to gear up now in the new year. Um, hopefully everything kind of just holds the way it's been uh, the last little while. Yeah. Um, and we're planning to book into the spring, um, now and they're actively seeking out, uh, booking. So, which is, is nice, you know, to know that uh, I'll be able to get on stage and actually do some live in-person shows again. Nice. Uh, yeah, that'll be fun for sure. Hi, the following podcast is brought to you by Radical Road Brewery, the best craft beer in the heart of Leslieville. Find him at 1177 Queen Street East. That's Radical Road Brewery. Hello, uh, my name is Adrian Sutherland. Uh, I'm coming to you today from Attawapiskat, which is located on the west coast of James Bay, way up in northern Ontario. And I'm a singer-songwriter, and my uh, most recent release was uh, When the Magic Hits. It's my solo debut album, which I'm pretty excited about. And welcome to the music. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Adrian, it's so awesome to have you on here again. Thank you. I apologize. I wasn't able to make it last time. I had a family thing that came up, but uh, I'm excited to sit down and chat with you today. So thanks. Yeah, looking forward to this. Yeah, absolutely. It's when I looked at my notes and I saw we had actually spoken the i guess the spring or the early summer of last year Mm -hmm. uh and it totally slipped my mind that we had spoken during this current pandemic Mm -hmm. uh it it, it's felt like this has lasted much longer Mm -hmm. than the what is it 20 months or so um that that we're out now um first off adrian how how are you doing well, I mean, I'm doing good. I think uh, I've been struggling a little bit like most people. I mean, uh, my men- mental health has been up and down, uh, but has been getting a lot better in the last six months. Um, um, just, uh, yeah, it was really tough for a lot of people. It was, it was hard on, uh, especially us here up in the north, because it seemed like everything was tenfold compared to everywhere else in the country, mm. in the world. Um, they were pretty uh, extreme, some of the restrictions that were put on us. So, so that was really hard, um, not seeing family for a very, very long time, especially uh, some of our family were stuck on the outside. Um, so that was tough, but, uh, you know, I've been busy. I've been uh, doing a lot of stuff around the house. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time out on the land. Mm-hmm. And I've been focused on a few different projects um, with music. So that's been, uh, that's been really, uh, I guess, uh, there's, there's been, if there's been some silver, silver lining, it certainly has been music and family nice was the was that was the was the moose hunt successful this year yeah it was we did we did two, we did two trips the first trip we didn't do that we didn't get any and then we we decided to do like an ad hoc uh, trip the last sort of last minute and um we did really well on the 
on the on the second trip. So we were pretty happy and and uh, we got we got our meat for the winter. So very good. nice. Very good. I I think I saw photos you may may have shared on on Instagram or Facebook. Is it the whole family goes out on these trips? Uh, mostly the men. Mostly okay. the men. So um, uh, some families will take t- uh, you know a big part of the family. Um, this trip, we we actually the first trip we took the whole family, uh, even our grandson, our four year old grandson, and we um, the second trip was just my myself, my wife, and my youngest son. Uh, so it was a, it mostly family. Uh, I try to include them on everything I'm doing. Um, um, now that, especially now that the kids and the boys are much older and they, they could really pull their own out there. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Congrats on, uh, the album when the magic hits. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how long did that, did that take you to put together? Well, I was starting to write, uh, just before the pandemic, uh, that winter, uh, before we got slammed. I was already writing. Uh, I was in writing sessions with um, a few different artists um, in in the Toronto area. Uh, so I was kind of prepping for this solo project for quite a while now, and then and then in, we were about halfway through uh, the pandemic, and it was starting to become uh, very clear that I wasn't going to be able to do some of the stuff we had planned. Um, prior to uh, the pandemic hitting us. So we had to kind of re, re uh, just kind of shuffle everything um, and then kind of um, just kind of look at the next year and what we could possibly do to keep music moving forward and keep me working in music. And first step was to get a space um, built. So that was sort of our priority. And so we built this this studio that I'm in now out of a C container. And then I was able to set up my, all my gear in here. And then I started working on uh, my first TV series, uh, which I scored. So that was very, um, very, very difficult for me because there's, I mean, there's a lot of technical challenges. Um, There's just so many, so many things that were going wrong for me, especially with technology. So that was the, the biggest part of the biggest challenge and the hurdle to overcome was the technology. But once we got, through all that, um, we ended up with uh, a pretty good score for the for the TV series, and then I shifted into uh, recording the album. Um, so we started, started okay. to put together all, all the uh, all the demos somewhere in about February last last year, last winter, and we were already talking with different producers. Um, and of course, it was gonna have to be uh, recorded. Everything was gonna have to be recorded all remotely. <laughs> Um, so once we had all that sorted out, we, uh, we started to uh, record the album in, I think, late February. Uh, we started uh, early March, and it took about three, four weeks from start to finish. Uh, all the while, I was getting ready uh, to go up to the spring camp for, the, for spring hunting with the family. So, um, yeah, and I did uh, all the vocals here. I did a lot of uh, acoustic stuff I did here as well. Um, and the rest of the album was c- recorded uh, over in Nashville uh, with Colin Linden. He brought in some players. He did a lot of playing on the record. And then we also had some players in uh, on Toronto as well that were working independently in their own little spaces. So that's kind of how everyone was working for throughout the whole the whole pandemic, especially uh, when it comes to the recording. I know I know there may have been a few uh, circumstances where. Um, people were actually going into studios to record, but uh, it was pretty rare from what I understand. Everyone was sort of, you know, getting their own little spaces set up to kind of keep mu- music, you know, alive and keep creating. And that's that's what I did. Um, and then I was pretty much finished first week of April. Uh, all the recording was done and we had all the uh, final mixes uh, in the bag. And uh, I kind of had one last lesson before I rushed off and uh, we spent uh, about a month and a half out on the land before I got back. Wow. How does, with, with, with technology being a challenge, um, how does that back and forth work? Like what's the, what's the first thing that gets laid down? Is that your vocals or how does that, how does that work altogether? Yeah. So, so based on the demos, um, we started to do a little 
bit of pre-production the first three, four days. And then we kind of rearranged some of the stuff. Um, and then I did the, I played, um, uh, played all the acoustic parts the way I normally would have played. And then we sort of kind of rearranged from there a little bit. So once I got the tracks back, I had basically um, a bed track to play to. Okay. Uh, acoustic and then with the new arrangements and then i started to to sing over all that stuff um all the all the lead vocals and then we did a little bit of um um a little bit of background stuff but not a whole lot um so that was basically the process and then we kind of build the rest of the songs around my vocals and and, and the acoustic tracks and uh, that's kind of how things started to come alive Nice. That's awesome. And you worked, you worked with a, a, like, there's so many people on this album where they've worked with you on the album. Like, I mean, I think of like Tim Cripps, uh, Jay, Serena Ryder, you know, Colin, like, you know, it's, it's one thing to have a band, but like, how did you, how did you pull together <laughs> such amazing people for your solo album? Like, a, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I think it was uh, really about, um, the I guess the the several months or about a year year and a half leading up to the recording of that album I had already been building these relationships. Uh, I did a little tour with uh, Blackie and Rodeo King, so I got to meet everyone there uh, for the first time and hang out with those guys for a little while. So it's just uh, um, Serena I met uh, a few years back, and uh, we um, decided that we wanted to write together. Um, we wanted to do more than one song. Unfortunately, um, we, uh, we only got ended up with the one, one song that we wrote together, which was walk with me. And that was a pretty interesting, uh, um, arrangement because when we first got together to write, we both brought the same idea to the, to the writing session, which I, my song was about a walk and, uh, her song was about a walk. So, and, uh, we, we both agreed that we liked her song better than mine or her idea so we went with <laughs> her song about a walk um but then we started to write you know this song because um she had i think she might have had a verse and chorus um and you know a nice arrangement on, on the guitar and we we started to write this uh beautiful song together it's such a powerful song um and to me it, it really symbolizes um i think reconciliation and and walking together and trying to find the common ground um and then uh, i worked with tim previously on on the midnight shine stuff so uh, him and i had been writing together uh for a little while now and we had a few, about three or four songs i think we had written in one of our last writing sessions so we got we grabbed two of those songs and put them on the album so yeah so he worked uh uh out of the woodshed studio which is the the Blue Rodeo and the, the Jim Cuddy, that whole, that whole team. Um, and then uh, the rest, uh, again, were just in their own spaces. So it was, uh, it was pretty, uh, it's quite remarkable actually that we were able to pull such a, such a wonderful album off the way we did. Yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to, because we keep putting the, the word out there. So if you have any say, we 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 want to eventually one day have the trifecta. We've had Tom on the show. We've had Steven on the show. So at some point we needed to get Colin. So if you have any pull to get Colin on the yeah. show with us, we would appreciate it. Yeah. Everybody, every, anybody who's just said they worked with or knows Colin, we do. We, we ask every time. We got we to get him on at some point. Anyway. He's a great, great guy. <laughs> uh, he's such a great player and amazing. He's just done... Uh, such a great job on the tracks he played on. Uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I really just the the right here is one of my favorite songs on the album, and uh, every time I hear it, it's like wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Adrian, what the the name of the album was when the magic hits. You also have the song mm -hmm. uh, "Magic Hits." What what does magic mean to you? What are you referring to in that song? Well, I think uh, magic is really. Uh, to me, it means that I guess when you finally catch that break, you know, when you finally, mm. you know, you work, you work hard, you grind it out. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, it feels like all that work and doesn't really add up to a whole lot. Um, and then, and then finally it starts to kind of 
flourish and things start to um, take shape. And I think that's, for me, that's what it means. And uh, this album is, ex- you know, extremely special for me. It's something uh, I absolutely uh, enjoy doing from start to finish. And uh, I, I just, I just love the songs. Um, I really, uh, I, I feel like I had to dig deep for some of the, some of the lyrics and uh, some of the music in there. And I just couldn't be more pleased with how it all turned out. Nice. Tell me about the video. That's a very interesting uh, video. Uh, You know, you talked earlier about everyone for the album was playing in their own homes or at least in their own cities and towns. Um, The video almost seems like uh, a visual representation of how the album was made. Everyone is, is, is in their own sort of space. Um, but t- tell me about uh, the making of that video. Yeah, uh, well, everyone, we had, I think, three different crews that uh, were filming. So we had a crew in Nashville that went and shot there uh, f- with Colin and uh, um, Janice. Uh, forgive me if I get the name wrong, but uh, his wife, who did uh, a lot of the, the keys on the album. And we uh, we did shots of the you know the strip down there um, um, of the city, mm-hmm. and then we did the Toronto stuff. We had uh, Johnny and uh, 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 Gary uh, in their spaces where, where they were playing, and uh, and then we did uh, the Ottawa Piscat scenes where my brother and I basically just shot it on my iPhone. Um, so we just, we picked, uh, we, we shot those scenes over a couple of days and, you know, with the, with the, with the film guys, you know, they're just maniacs. Sometimes they want, you want you to grab multiple scenes of the same sort of multiple, uh, takes or different angles. This, that's always gonna, it was a little bit, uh, um, I guess cumbersome at times, you know, cause you think, well, we need this, we need that, we need more. And it was like, t- you know, two days of shooting turned into like four or whatever, um, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, I tried to to give them the best um, material possible for them for what kind of I guess what they were shooting for, and uh, um, so you see the Adwaps get scenes. Um, you see me just kind of walking in on we were just sort of adja- adjacent to the community out and out on the back trail there, and there were some nice beautiful uh, purple flowers there, which uh, really kind of jump out on you on 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 the on the video. And then there was this really cool moment where um, uh, Colin, Colin Linden comes into the scene. Yeah. So for a very brief moment, he kind of, he came into my world. Like that's how I kind of interpret that whole scene, which I thought was really cool. Uh, of, Absolutely. Of, uh, Justin, the, uh, the um, uh, director, and how he did that. So yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was crazy how we pulled it all together and uh, it, tur- it turned out really nice. Yeah, you've got a a lot of different styles of videos. There's the, I think it's right here. It's all the selfies. Yeah, the the, the selfie video. I guess if you want to, if you want to call it that. Yep. Really, the one question I have there, Adrian, is: Did you ever get to eat those chocolate chip cookies? I did actually. I did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was some uh, serious baking going on in the house that day, and uh, uh, once they were done and coming out of the oven, they were like you know kind of taunting me with them a little bit as i was trying to get these selfies in and i would think it was 1600 selfies over 1600 and it seemed like a lot um you know a little bit overwhelming when they said we need 1600 selfies i'm like my goodness that's a lot Uh, but they quickly they quickly started to add up and uh, it was like every week i would upload a batch um for them and then you know that's kind of how we made it all work Uh, we we did a lot of um scenes on, on the water we were out mm-hmm. um up river and then i don't know if you noticed uh there was a caribou being dragged in one of the one of the oh i don't know if i saw that but yeah there was we were actually heading up and then uh, there was a there was some caribou and then we were with another um group of people who shot uh, uh the caribou just ahead of us so i thought it would be something you know worth c- including in the video um uh, anyway, so there was all these cool, th- th- cool things, and 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 for me, I think uh, I think as an artist and a people that are always trying to polish you up, and and clean you up, and 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 present you in a certain way, I think this was this was you know me not being presented in any kind of way. It was just me. Yeah, this is who I am, 
you know, I don't have any nice clothes on. I didn't brush my hair for days. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was nice because I, I, I just wanted to be myself and I wanted to show, show the world like this, this is who I am, you know, outside of music. And um, so it was very, it was very, uh, um, it was very good for, uh, it was, it was a nice opportunity for me to kind of give people a glimpse of that, you know, my life up here. You had those nice shades on, though. Yeah, we had the Ray Bans. So we had to. We definitely. I had like it. those glasses. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Greg. No, no, I was going to say. I mean, I, you know, I I feel that's also with the album. Like the album is, it seems so personal, and I know it is personal. Some of the stories, um, you know, no, no, nowhere to run. Um, uh, you know, it it really seems like you're you're putting yourself out there with this album. So I, I don't know, thank you for that. Yeah, it was. Uh... It for sure that that uh, nowhere to run was a song I had written several years back, and I just never really uh, had the courage to put it out because of the sensitive nature, and mm-hmm. and uh, I was always worried that you know that I might get some you know back backlash for for writing about such a sensitive uh, issue, um, but you know we we decided I was comfortable uh, enough to put it out. Um, it, you know, like the whole album, even the look of the album, the cover and all the, all the, the stuff we put in, in the CD, um, uh, booklet, uh, we were in some of the, some of the songs, it was really personal and it was really, um, um, again, it was just kind of like showing a side of me that I guess not everyone gets to see, um, with the midnight shine stuff, it's always been mostly, um, you know, we were trying to pitch something else to, to our audiences and to the rest of the world. Uh, but this one, it was just me in the rough, you know, me, this is me. This is who I am. Uh, we did photo shoot at camp. Um, my wife did all the the photos for that. Everything we used leading up to that um, um, album release and the, and the stuff we put out in the media releases and stuff like everything was shot out in the bush and it was kind of had this little, you know, rough around the edges look and, and the music, it, I think is, is, uh, a, it kind of reflects that, uh, in the album. That's for yeah. sure. Um, Adrian, I wanted to ask you about your studio that, mm-hmm. that you're currently in today. Um, first off, like, where does one go to get a shipping container? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, we luckily have a whole bunch kicking around here. Um, really? Most, most of us don't have access to it, though. No, no, like people like me don't have access. This one here, excuse me. This one here, I just uh, had lucked out on um, getting this one. It's a 40-foot sea container, and there's a bit of background to it. I won't get into all the details, but uh, it, ended up, it ended up here, and I said, well, okay, well, you can put it on the lot. Um, as long as I get to use half of it, that was the agreement. So they brought it over and that stirred up some, uh, some trouble, but then we got through <laughs> all that. And, uh, so, you know, I, I got part of it, uh, as storage for some of the programs, uh, that are ran, ran up here, land-based programs. So they store some of the stuff on, in the other half of it, which is a, a pretty, um, nice way to kind of make it all work. So, mm-hmm. and then, uh, and then the idea of course came to, to, you know, build, a studio inside the other half yeah like where because wow. i think the last time we spoke and i remember earlier on last year you would do maybe these weekly uh like facebook uh mini concerts where where were you filming those oh i was just on the other side of the the lot here i had um well i <clears throat> if we back up uh, uh a few years a couple years we actually had a, a really, really old house, which we had to tear down because there was a lot of mold problems. So we tore that down and then we had to live in this 16 by 20 shack with a tarp roof on it um, for maybe six to eight months. So we were living in there. And then when we finished building the house and moved into the house, I kind of turned that into my little space. So the last time we spoke okay. and some of the shows were done in that space. Ah, Nice. And you've figured out all this wiring and the lighting and the internet all on your own, I guess. I got, I got wires and cables running like everywhere here. It's, it's, it's uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty scary. Um, actually, I have, uh, I, uh, my brother is a tradesman. He's a carpenter, um, very skilled. So 
he helped me build this. Um, uh, he basically kind of said, you need to do this, then you need to do that, and I'll get you started. And then so we started on it together, and I pretty much finished it all. And we had uh, just a few people like from the community stopping in just to help, you know, spending an hour or two here coming in uh, just to hang out and, and, and lend a hand. So that was really nice. And then I have um, my childhood friend who I, um, um, who's an electrician. My wife doesn't tr- trust any of my electrical work. She says that <laughs> anytime uh, there's an electrical problem or anything like that, and I start, you know, trying to figure out what's going on she's like you better get paul he says she said we <laughs> better get paul so uh, paul came over and he wired uh everything we um so we're legit we uh we pass any building inspections um so we're good so i i'm lucky to have friends like that who nice. are skilled and uh, they help me wire uh, all, all the lights and the plugs and uh, i did all the heating actually um, finished off all the heating and the baseboard heating and stuff like that. So okay, er- everything works. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. How, so how do you, how do you, how do you set up a shipping container for the acoustics? Like I'm like, is that in the wood that you've got around you and stuff? To, to well, or how? Well, yeah. Well, we got the, the, what we used the wood panels. Um, we actually, if you flip them around, they're white. Um, they're like the classic wood uh, panels that you would have seen in like the 70s, 80s kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. The cheapest as well. So, and then we decided to just flip them around because you have this nice little wood kind of mahogany look. Um, and uh, um, the floor's got a nice uh, vinyl kind of, it looks yeah. like wood as well. And then we did drywall in the ceiling. Okay. The, the sound is not too bad, but you, you, uh, sometimes I'll hear traffic going by. Um <laughs> Uh, right now, uh, we have a little walk, wooden walkway, a uh, board walkway along the sea can. So when when uh, the kids walk by, you hear them crunching in the snow this time of year. So thankfully, I'm not recording right now. But uh, yeah, so there's times where um, I'll have to just stop recording and say, listen, this is not happening right now. The neighbor's doing something, banging away out there. And it it, it really get it sound, it really kind of comes through the, the, the uh. tin. Yeah. But you don't get any like sound bouncing off inside the room itself. There's a bit of a uh, a little bit of a um, natural reverb. Um, okay. So it, we were we were we were picking that up and we were doing our vocals. So we were just trying to play around with the mic a little bit, um, play with the angles, mm-hmm. um, and then we figured it out. It, we ended up um, we ended up kind of finding a way around it. The other thing is that we can we can dampen a lot of the like just by hanging an insulated blanket up behind me sort of okay. isolate this area. So there's little things we can do. I have a drum kit in here that I recorded on, um, um, which doesn't sound too bad. I mean, I'm not a, a percussionist or anything like that. Um, I played in a high school, but uh, that's the extent of, of that. <laughs> Some of the scoring that I was going after last year, they were required, you know, a whole bunch of different samples. And so I was recording like all sorts of crazy sounds in here, trying to, go after these different scores. Um, so I, I think uh, if I were to ever record uh, a full, you know, track drums and everything in here, I'm going to definitely have to get really creative here and isolate some of the stuff, especially the amps um, and, and po- possibly uh, figure out how to isolate the drum kit a little bit as well. Nice. Uh, you talked about scoring. I wanted to ask you about doing unsettled. Uh, yeah. This was your first scoring project? Yeah. How does that, it must must be a different muscle uh, to use because you're more, it's more, I'm, I'm guessing, more ambient sounds, you know, you've, you've got to maybe watch and, and feel the music with what's going on on screen. How did, how did you manage to, to, to learn this new skill? Well, I had, uh, um, a couple of uh, people coached me through it. I had two of them are LA based. So they were kind enough to give me some um, pointers um, and they provided some samples to me as well, uh, which I was able to use. Um, uh, I talked to one of the guys who's um, both have been composing for several years. One of them has been in business now for like 30 years or something like that. Oh, wow. And uh, you know, it was more like I had trouble setting up um 
the pro tools and there's some, there was some learning involved in all of that. And so once we got around all that and then started to, to lay down the, the score, it, it wasn't too bad. And again, it just became an issue of, okay, where do I put this and where do you want this? And I just wasn't sure. And I just, so I tried two or three episodes and they were just like, nah, that's not what we want. <laughs> <laughs> and then the producer came on and we kind of walked through five or six, five or six episodes together. Um, and uh, I think it wasn't until the fifth, uh, fifth episode um, where I really started to catch my groove. And then they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like, they just, what the hell happened? Like, uh, we we're just blown away um, with what you did. And, nice. and just better and better and better at it. And, and then there's just a whole bunch of other stuff going on, uh, mostly technical stuff uh, that we, we had to really, you would not believe, like, uh, it was just like, it came to the point where some of the other um, team members on the other side were like, you can't be serious. We don't believe you. And it was becoming bad. And I'm just like, so anyway, I decided to just put everything on um, a hard drive and I'm like, I'm going to mail it to you. I said, this is like, I'm, I can't, it's going to take me weeks to upload all this stuff. I'm just going to mail it to you. And then, you know, we'll send it the fastest way. And then I go to the post office and they're like, we're closed. <laughs> so what you you're closed <laughs> but so there were so many you know things happening and uh hurdles that we had to overcome mostly technical uh but in the end it uh uh we persevered that is awesome i i just remembered you know when you were talking about in that video um there's a caribou that you're pulling along i remember there's an owl i know i'm going off on a tangent here uh there's an owl in that video i think is, yeah. is that a pet owl you have? Well, yeah, it was a pet. It uh, was a, it was a rescue. Okay. Um, a young couple brought it, a young couple had posted or brought it over and asked if we knew anything about it. And the story behind it is that they were out on a little hike near the community, and then they came across uh, the nest and they saw the adult, the mom, I guess, uh, dead. And this oh, little no. owl, this this little owlet was tied up by oh. the like to a tree by the, mm. some of tied it with a piece of string to a tree around its little, you know, ankle or whatever and left it there. So they, they took this oh. little outlet and then they didn't know what to do with it or how to feed it. And uh, they said, could you take over it? And we're just kind of like, I guess. So we <laughs> um, I've had, uh, when I was younger, we've had like different hawks and different owls and stuff that we raised. Mm. Uh, growing up so we we knew like i knew how to feed them and what they ate uh, and then i called i reached out to an organization um the owl foundation i believe uh and they they were very helpful um and and you know you need to you know it needs this it needs that and and it was just coming becoming like a full-time job and i'm like oh my goodness <laughs> so, and then of course like i it's like well i i can't look after this thing and it was starting to i guess the concern was that once the bird imprints on you you can't release it back into the wild because it basically becomes part of your you know your everyday life and it, and it gets so ingrained in human life i guess uh you know it was in the house running around it watched tv with me and then we had breakfast together and it was just like they're like what do you want to do with this owl like because it sounds like it's it's probably already imprinted on you and you won't be able to release it in the wild and i said i don't know what to do with it i really don't know and uh Honestly, that's why I contacted this organization. Um, perhaps maybe you can take it, and um, because it, I knew it had an injury and one uh, of the wings didn't look right, so and I'm like, I, I just don't know how to take care of like a wounded um, bird. So, um, so we we made arrangements for to ship it out, um, and they actually brought up a snowy owl that they rehabilitated for release, and we released their owl for them, uh -huh. and. They took hours. They uh, they took hours, and uh, it's doing well. It did have oh, a cool. it did have a fracture, yeah, uh, in one of the wings, and uh, but it was it was still flying, and it healed up pretty good. So um, the owl is doing well. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So I understand, Adrian. You like you're doing so much stuff. You've got your solo album and everything that's happening with that. Your, your videos, especially Politician Man, are winning awards, left, right, center. Congrats, by the way. I love that song. 
Um, you're scoring TV shows. And and you're writing a book. Writing a memoir. Yeah. Tell us about this. Yeah. Um, that's, that's been something uh, I've been working on the past year. And um, that I've been given the opportunity to write about pretty much anything I want to. And uh, we, um, we've been back and forth a little bit now with the editor. And I'm supposed to get back the the manuscript um, we're quite a ways along now in, in the writing process. And there's some uh, incredible stuff in there from what I'm told by um, uh, the editor in, uh, in the uh, uh, random house, penguin random house. And yeah, so I, I did, I just wrote about when I was a child growing up here. So what that was like the experience there. Uh, I have a, you know, I started writing about, um, um, of course, being out on the land, um, talking about the spirituality and the, the Cree, Cree views and how we see the world. Uh, I also talked about some of the challenges and kind of how I see it. You know, I've been here my entire life. I've been grinding it out here on the ground. And I see a lot. Uh, there's a lot of things that I see, I think, um, and have opinions about. So mm. I write been a lot of uh, i probably spent a good chapter on just writing about out of you know and some of the politics and stuff like that and my experiences and my encounters over the years because i there's been times where i've been right in the thick of everything you know and uh, i write about those experiences and i think they're important for people to know because no one like nobody has a clue uh, really has a clue of what it's like up here and what's been going on so yeah well i'm wondering if you can talk a bit about Yes. A bit about that, Adrian. Like what, I mean, I was talking to my wife while we were having dinner prior to coming on. Um, and she was telling me the first she believes she ever heard of Atawapiskat was because of the water crisis mm -hmm. uh, that was up there. Um, what is, is what we read in the news, what, what Atawapiskat is all about? What's, you know, when you talk to people that may ask you, uh, to describe your town, what do, what do you what do you, what do you say? Well, there's no there's no doubt that we are a community uh, that has been struggling. You know, we've been struggling with a lot of things for 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 several years now. You know, there's water issues. Um, we have um, um, housing shortages, housing um, issues. We have we've had the suicide crisis. Um, which, by the way, we're in, in the middle of another one. And uh, I mean, so th there's there's those challenges. And then there's, of course, the, the, the politics that exist up here. Um, I think uh, I, I, those, those are the, some of the challenges that I find very difficult to, to uh, kind of uh, navigate through, uh, hmm. especially the politics up here. So and most people tell you like Indian politics or native or indigenous politics are some of the most you know difficult or most complex wow. to, to work within or to navigate through. Uh, it's just a whole, a whole different um, you know monster <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that you have to deal with. But uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, you, you know we've seen the worst. You know, mainstream media always shows us the worst of this place. But there, there are so many good things that are going on. Um, like most communities, you know, there, there's the good and the bad. Um, there, there's a lot of interesting things that are going on here. Um, you know, I'm here. I'm still here. I raise. I'm raising my family here. I choose to be here. I don't need to be here. Uh, I could live anywhere I want in this country and thrive. Um, but I, I. I I want to be close to um, the land, you know, where, where my ancestors uh, roamed. Um, I'm deep rooted here. My, my family and I are deep rooted here. So for me to just get up and leave, which I've been asked a lot to, like why, you know, yeah. we, we moved down closer to Toronto, um, you know, for music and other things. And people have suggested that many times uh, over, over the course of the last maybe several years. And sure, I, you know, I would consider that, consider moving away of course um if it if it meant that uh if it uh i guess if it made sense you know for my family to do that sure i would do it um 
And I guess for me, it's always like, I, I, you know, there's a lot of reasons I think people don't know, like, you know, we have burials up here. Uh, some of us have burials where our loved ones are buried. You know, we can't just abandon those, you know, for, oh. me, for me to leave, uh, you know, a burial where I had um, um, laid one of my babies to rest, you know. Wow. Can't do it. Yeah. No, I did stuff like that. I don't even think about, mm. um, or wouldn't, wouldn't even fathom that that's, that's a decision, yeah. um, that, that one has to make because you're right. You know, we look at someone like yourself that has had, you know, from where I'm sitting is, is someone that is, is, is successful or is held in high regard as, as a musician across the country and even, you know, across borders and stuff. And just wondering, man, if he just ever went to whether it's Toronto or Nashville or, or LA or something like that, you know, just thinking what more someone can accomplish. But there's always, there's always, you know, reasons like family and um, that people also have to make decisions on. Yeah, that that are just as important as as anything else. Yeah, I mean. Uh... I chose to raise my family the Cree way and the uh -huh. true tradition, traditional way. Um, and I, you know, I do, I'm doing my best to, to um, transfer whatever knowledge that I have onto my children and grand grandchildren. And I think in order for me to do that, this is the place um, that I need to be, you know, in order for me to, to be able to kind of live, live out that uh, obligation um as a parent as a grandparent yeah for sure um in some of your videos as i watch you know whether you're taking photos or filming on the land or um you're in the water on 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 some of the canoes and boats and stuff um it just strikes me how how beautiful the area is uh from a visual standpoint i'm wondering if if you could, I don't know, if you could describe if, if someone were to uh, to fly over Atahuapiscat, um, what, what, what would we see? Well, it's a, it's a small community. It's not very big. You would see that the, the houses are very, very in close vicinity to each other. Um, so we're pretty crammed together. Uh, pretty much... Uh, um, uh, the, the the landscapes, uh, there's lakes, rivers, you have the sea, which is uh, James Bay. Um, beautiful just to see when you start coming over to bay, the, the bay like that when you fly in. And and then you have these these little communities along the bay. Um, yeah, I, there was, I don't know how to describe it, but every time I come home, like when I'm doing a tour, um, I start to feel this sense of uh, protection and a sense of, um, being safe and and um, once I start to see the bay, I don't know where that comes from. Maybe it's because it's home, you know, to to me. But I don't feel that anywhere else, anywhere I go. And when I start to see the bay and I start to see the landscape, the Muskeg and the James Bay Frontier, I just start to just you know any anxieties and any 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 fears and stuff just start to go away. And I I feel. Uh, close to something much bigger than than life you know um, yeah that's the best way i could describe it nice so, yeah. nice well i'll tell you this as someone who's lived basically their whole life in toronto you're not going to get that here you don't go like downtown <laughs> and see these buildings or hydro fields they go i feel at peace <laughs> but uh you know whenever i've had the opportunity to drive out of the city and just see land and sky and stuff. That's when I feel, ah, oh, this is. I've had, I've had him up to the Manitoulin a few times. So nice. Yeah. yeah. Got, got him up there. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's for sure. Um, I wanted to ask about, oh, there's a question I had with Serena Ryder and walk with me. Uh, oh my goodness. Oh, this is what it was. Um, you, I, I, I read somewhere, I don't know if it was in this stuff that uh, that Beth or Rosanna had sent over to me, um, or maybe articles that I've, that I've read. Uh, but yes, so Walk With Me talked, you know, talked about that issue or the, 
the hope of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to ask, you know, from, from your standpoint, from where you are, what, what does that word mean to you? What does reconciliation actually mean? Oh, I know it's, it's a big word. You know, people have been throwing that word around for a long time now. And uh, I think um, for a lot of us, it's, it, when we hear that word, it, it, it tends to hit a bit of, I guess it tends to hit a nerve. Um, mostly because we think we feel, uh, and I think uh, I speak for most Indigenous people, we feel that um, reconciliation hasn't really, um, really kicked in. You know, in this country, and in some ways it may, it may, it may have, but in a lot of ways it hasn't. And I think there's a long way, a long way, uh, a long road ahead of us. I think as Canadians, uh, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians, to find a way to to understand each other. You know, because a lot of the times, I feel like I'm trying to um, explain. You know. Uh -huh. uh, and I think that's part of it, you know, and it's important for me to, to help people understand, you know, why, whether it's, why I choose to live in Anawapiskat, you know, yeah, I've had people comment, um, you know, it's been a lot of commentary on some of the um, uh, blogs that I've done for the hunting post in, in previous years, you know, people come out and just start bashing me, you know, uh, huh. you know, if you knew any better, you would have left years ago. There's just really, it's, it's, it's not, it's so ignorant to say that, you know, and uh, um, I think people just need to, to to take the time to just try to open up and open their minds up and listen. And uh, just, just, you know, I think in order for that to happen, um, in order for reconciliation to happen, I think people just need to step out of their own, their own skin for a little while. Hmm. It's really try to, to, to try to, to understand uh, some of these issues and why they exist. Um, as you know, that, you know, as most Canadians know now, uh, the truth is coming out, you know, and there can be no reconciliation before the truth is dealt with. And uh, um, th this country has a real dark history and how it's treated indigenous people. And uh, there's more to come. There's more to come. And uh, it's uh yeah, so that I kind of went off on a rant, but uh, I think for me that word, you know, kind of it it bugs me a little bit. But I, yeah. I also know that uh, it it also means making uh, right all the wrongs that were done. You know, it's like somebody came in to your house and just kind of displaced everything. You know, and just completely destroyed or displaced everything that you know, and and then you're just left to pick up every you know pick up all these pieces and try to replace everything that had been displaced or broken and that's not easy you know it's it's very difficult it's it's not an easy uh task for anyone for any culture um mm. for, for any human it takes a long time you know um since we're talking about reconciliation my own family i mean my mom is a, a residential school survivor so you know, we, we, my siblings and I, you know, we went through um, a lot of, a lot of difficulties growing up. We were all separated. You know, we, we grew up in a very um, um, bad environment, um, which led to a lot of horrible things, you know, for our family. So we were, we were able to, as children of a residential school survivor, we were able to kind of break that cycle, you know, because, um for one, we made that decision. We don't want our kids to ever experience the things we did, you know, growing up. There's just no way that we would ever put our kids through that. So we were going to do everything we can to heal, to heal ourselves and to make ourselves better um, and give them the the love they deserve and the support and the opportunities. Um, um, so that's, that's basically, uh, I guess, what uh, that word would mean to me. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it, it is only one word, but it's it's a it's a complicated yeah word, and it's not it's not an easy word. Yeah. Um, you know, just when you think, okay, I'm I'm doing enough, or we're and I'm speaking for myself and as as a as an immigrant, you know, we're maybe we're doing enough, 
you know, I, I give a little bit, bit of money here. I give a little bit of money there. I um, go to a powwow a couple of times. And, and you know, it, I, I guess it's not, it's not just these token actions. It's, it's more about, um, you know, if, if I read an article of yours, mm-hmm. not being that person that bashes someone, but more understanding, you know, where, where people are coming from. Mm-hmm. You know, and like you said, imagine if someone came to your house and just destroyed everything. You know, you can replace a plate or a television. Yeah. But if they take your your soul or your life away, mm-hmm. you, you can't go to Walmart and, and get another one of those. Yeah. Right? You've got to build it up back up again over generations. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's uh, a lot of people are lost. You know, people are are trying to um, find their identity, and we see a lot of cultural re- revitalization happening right across the country. And and some of us have been lucky, you know. Especially, I think some of the northern bands have been. There's the language retention is very high because oh. of the re- we're, we're so remote, right? Yeah. And we were sort of the last people to be in contact with, you know, government and Indian agents. It's just kind of like the last sort of, and we're so underdeveloped up here and underserviced. So in a lot of ways, there's, there is, there is some upside to being so far away from and being so isolated um, because with the language retention and the language you're being able to know your language and speak it every day. Um, the language that I speak, that we speak, the Cree is called Nihil and um, I speak Umishkegwa. Uh, Cree, but it's the natural language, or the, it's like a prayer language. So when we speak to Creator, uh, we use the same uh, words when we speak in our common tongue. So it's uh, it's it's very um, it's no wonder why it's so important, you know, for your identity and to to know you know where you come from and to be able to self-identify with the language and everything around you, um, the universe and your world that you live in. So. So in, 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 in some ways, um, I feel very fortunate that I've been able to retain my language. And there are so many people out there that are just trying so hard to learn, you know, their language and because they've lost it. You know, it's been taken away from them, um, basically ripped from them. Wow. Adrian, um, th- thank you for sharing. Um, I know... Yes. It's it's easy for Greg and I to sit back and listen, but I'm sure it's uh, uh, it's not as simple or as easy for you to to you know talk about uh, Ottawa Pascad and and you know decision as you know what may some people might think as easy as you know just moving to where there's more action. Mm-hmm. It's it's not something you take lightly. So I want to sh- thank you for yes, thank you for being generous and and sharing with us for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I really would love for you to play but i would i also appreciate that if you uh, sort of want to take a a break because it, this was heavy if, if you want to or if you just don't feel like it at all well, i could play um okay cool thank that you would be a good way to or a segue um to get out of the heavy stuff and into something a little bit lighter <laughs> what uh, what song do you want to play for us today um i'm gonna play big city dreams <laughs> And um, it's it's the first song on the that's solo debut album. And uh, it kind of reminds me of when I was a young young boy, and I used to watch um, much music or um, um, what's the other one called? I always forget. MTV. Uh, MTV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you started to watch the videos. We had we had the MTV up here, and I think one other channel, which was TBO or something. Uh, <laughs> so it, it kind of reminds me of that time where I was watching a Brian Adams video, and I would rock the air guitar, uh, the air guitar out to it, and uh, I I remember wanting to be like that someday. That's uh, kind of where this song comes from. Chasing big city dreams 
got no fear Cause I got a song that will get me the hell out of here But every time I get my feet moving For a moment I see you, then you disappear I was going somewhere If only I could find my way clear But every time I get the wheels turning This damn road's closed again And I'm still here song for you up here the winter nights will turn us to the fire I see my boys have got my father's eyes We walk the frozen river flows beneath us We talk my father's words come to me When the eagle guides the wind decides we're just searching is always there under your feet Hear the drum and feel your heart beating The earth is a song Going and escape The earth sings a song Set you free Sing my song with you <laughs> Yeah! Awesome. Oh, Thank buddy. you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> wow. So wow, a, wow. A, a few, th- I, right off the bat, you know, you, t- you talked about air guitar. I literally felt like I should like pick up my <laughs> guitar from up there and ju- I can't play, but just to pretend like <laughs> phenomenal. Oh, what a great song. Yeah. Number Thank two, you. Greg, I don't know if you agree with me. We've had people play on this show before. Uh, this I was this was the best sound. <laughs> yes, like Hands the down. best. Yeah, I but probably has something to do with this uh, uh, interface I have. I've been just starting to learn how to use it. So I'm running everything through there and we got some decent audio at least. It's, no, it's, it was fantastic. It was like we had because sometimes sometimes the guitar is too much or the audio, like the, the vocals are too much. It was just perfect. Beautiful. Thank you. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. So before we wrap it up, I have a question to ask you, but before I get to that, I don't know, and I hope you take this as a compliment. Um, and that was a weird way to set this up, but anyway, um, <laughs> when I, when I first heard magic hits, I honestly felt this overwhelming sense of gourd mm-hmm. downy around me. I don't know. I, and I, again, I have no idea if it's intentional and I hope you take that as a compliment, but I just, I don't know why I just felt that. Anyway. Yeah. There, it, it's it, to me, um, there's something about that song. It kind of, it conjures up something, I don't know, otherworldly. I don't know how to explain yeah. it. I get the chills every time. And uh, it's funny you mentioned uh, Gord Downey because there's some interesting, interesting stuff that I'm working on. 
Oh. That uh, I can't say too much about it at this point, but when, mm-hmm. when I start, uh, I'm hoping that I'll be able to um, bring this thing I'm working on that involves Gord Downey in, into my performances when I start performing in the new year. Um, but you only get to hear it if you come to the show. It's nothing that's... Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be really... It's, it's it's already blowing me away that, uh, um, you know, I get to be a part of something so great, you know, and awesome. everything that Gord stood for and, and the legacy he left behind is just... Uh, I mean, there's no words to describe it. I agree with you 100%, 100%. So the, the the last question I like to ask before we finish off for the night is, um, what's in your earbuds lately? What are you listening to that other people should be checking out? Ooh, um, I was listening to, um, I li- listening to the Killers' new album. They did an America uh, album, which is completely different than anything they've ever done before. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been really enjoying that, uh, that album. So, uh, other than that, um, been listening to some classic stuff, um, into the mystic, uh, mm-hmm. by Van Morrison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, just some classic stuff. I'm looking like Dolly Parton's, uh, um, uh, what's the name? <laughs> anyway. Uh, the name I can't even think of right now. I'm so horrible with names, but uh, mostly some classic stuff. And then the, nice. um, I got turned on to some Ameri- uh, Americana and some other folk stuff um, uh, earlier on this month. All right. Awesome. The Thank killers. you. Killers, awesome. Adrian, um, this has been a, a, a fantastic chat. An honor. Thank you so much for your time, for you, for your honesty. Uh, thank you for the music for sure. Um, go to Bandcamp, buy Adrian's music. Uh, are you, are you still Midnight China? Is there still plans to still make music with the band? It, well, there's um, definitely the band uh, has expressed interest to continue working together. Um, nice. Uh, we're we don't know when we're going to be able to actually start doing shows um i guess we'll kind of cross that path yeah. you know and when queries i'm sure are going to start coming in about booking the band in the next little while um we certainly had talked about prior to the pandemic we had talked about doing uh, another album together so that's still something that uh, we're all very very uh committed to and interested in wanting to to do together so i'm hoping that we'll be able to do that in the near future Awesome. If people want to buy your music, listen to your music, where, where, where should they go to check this out? Oh, um, well, I'm on uh, pretty much every social media platform. Uh, you can also go to www.adriansutherlandmusic.com. You'll find everything there, all the different links. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you again. Um, look forward to uh, seeing you live uh and and uh, and in person and um yeah all the best love your stuff thank you and keep making music thank you so much thank you this has been a really good chat guys 